Hello, good morning to all. Welcome to today's Daily Dose on Market Insights by Oenda, presented by myself, Kelvin Wong, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. So very good morning to all. Today will be a brand new month, the month of October. And also, wow, my time pretty much flies. Uh, so now we are into Q4 of 2023. That means three more months before 2023 ends. So uh, very good morning. So all today is Monday, the 2nd of October. So before we start our daily dose of market insights, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, so leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, nor financial advice or recommendation for any investment product. All right, so as usual, so before we go to our gist of this presentation, we will have the three key, takeaway, three key takeaways, that means a key recap of highlights and events. Events could be economic data and as well as important events in terms of political or geopolitics that took place over the weekend and as well as during the Friday US session. Uh, what is the key data or events to look out for for today? And most important, as well, to round up, we will have this short-term technical outlook on the various asset classes that I would like to actually share with you all that exhibit interesting technical configuration. All right, so without further ado, let's highlight of the key highlights and events that take shape over the weekend as well as last Friday. So let's start with the events first, all right? Over here. Very quickly, let me share my the other screen. All right, good. Okay, so now let me focus more on the screen instead, okay? So over the last weekend, you know that last week, right, there was this risk of this potential US government shutdown. So Congress managed to actually uh, prevent this shutdown by uh, passing, uh, what I call it, uh, by passing a stopgap funding. And also the legislation does not uh, include this additional billions of aid to Ukraine, which was actually a sticky one that actually uh, prevents uh, this, uh, we call it several bills in the US, several, we call it bills uh, to being passed in the House. But right now, due to this uh, squabbles between the Republicans, there's this, uh, this is the House Speaker, McCarthy. So there's a risk that McCarthy may be up for removal. OK, so that is something to actually watch out for as well in the next couple of weeks. But one thing positive over here is that uh, they managed to actually narrowly avert this costly federal shutdown. All right. So it removed off a what I call a puzzle, a, a bit of this joyous political risk in US. OK, so now uh, another thing to look out for, another thing to want to share with you all is over the weekend, we have a slew of uh, China data. Okay, but before I talk about China data, let's look at the US data first on Friday, all right? So on Friday, there's this core PCE index, which is the uh, index or a inflationary gauge that the Fed tends to actually watch to have a, a view of the inflationary situation in US. So let us take a look at Solia. Uh, Okay, so let's look at the core PCE price index. So this is the month on month. So month on month, right, you need to talk about every month, right? So month on month, they actually in, uh, we in came in below expectation. Expectation is 0.2% month on month. It came in at 0.1% month on month. But however, if you look at the core, the PCE index month on month, so this one actually doubled, uh, uh, doubled as a, it went up by two basis points, 0.4% over 0.2% the previous month, which is in July due to higher oil prices, but uh, it came in below expectation of 0.5%. And most importantly over here is that uh, the PCE price index year on year, the one also came in below expectation, came in within expectation of 3.5%, above 3.4% year on year in July. So what you could see over here, this bunch over here, right? Higher oil prices has starts to actually creep into the PCE price index on a month on month basis and as well as a year on year basis. Okay, so if you look at the trend right on the year on year basis over here, it starts to actually tick higher. So this is actually close to a uh, kind of a uh, two, three month higher. Okay, it starts to U turn higher due to higher oil prices. But what's interesting over here is the core PCE index, right? 
uh, has started to dip down, continue to dip down lower below 4%. So it was 3.9% year on year for the month of August, below 4.3% year on year in July, and we in expectation of 3.9% year on year. Okay, so you look at the trend. Okay, it going to uh, inch downwards. Uh. So this is the lowest lowest amount uh, since May 2021. Okay, so it's about close to about more than about a two year lower. All right, at 3.9 percent year on year. So all in all, right, what we could see over here is that the core PCE price index has starts to dip down. But however, do not forget over here is that consumers still feels the pinch uh, when a PCE price index going to inch upwards. That means that that is we're talking about over here the one that is in this one all right that includes of oil prices or uh, energy prices so as you all know that uh consumers also need to consume energy gasoline prices increase so if energy prices going to inch up higher it will actually tends to actually hit into consumer spending or consumer sentiment so if you look at the consumer sentiment over here which has really been start to actually show this is the mehigan consumer sentiment final one so for the month of September, it's at 68.1. So uh, revised slightly higher than uh, than the previous uh, preliminary print of 67.7, but below the previous month of 69.5. Okay, so if you click on the trend, we could see over here, okay, the trend has starts to inch down uh, in the third consecutive month uh, for the month of September, all right? second consecutive month of inching downwards so for sure we start to see that higher consumer higher energy prices has starts to actually uh creep down into consumer sentiment okay start to see consumer center start to inch down so that actually right if you look at from a medium term perspective that shouldn't boss well for the u.s economy if interest rate going to be remains higher for a longer period okay now the next indicator okay let me delete this uh, delete this this okay so the next economic data that's out over the weekend will be the china key data which is the manufacturing pmi and the non-manufacturing pmi so let's start with the saturday one first so for saturday right this mps is the government compiled national bureau of statistics that means the government compiled a manufacturing survey on the manufacturing for manufacturing activities so for the government compiled one it was very rosy so Manufacturing activities actually rose back to expansionary mode at 50.2, above 49.7, and also slightly above consensus at 50. So if you look at the trend of the manufacturing PMI, government compound one, the MPS one, actually rose 50.2. So this is actually the first growth factory activity since March. Okay, since March, uh, over here. Okay, it starts to actually inch up higher. So indicating to us that uh, that particular targeted stimulus from China top policy makers has starts to actually work its way through the wider economy, okay, which is actually positive. But if we were to look at uh, over here for the non-manufacturing PMI data, it was actually also pretty much rosy as well. So that the services one, so the services activity also going to creep higher, 51.7 above uh, 51 of the previous month in August. All right, if you look at the trend, okay, it's not a creep higher as well. So this is actually the ninth straight month of expansion, uh, staying above the 50% 50, 50 level mark. Okay, so that's for the government compound one. But however, if you look at the private sector compound one, uh, the one released on Sunday, the Chising Manufacturing PMI. So Chising Manufacturing PMI, right, it consists of more SME company that means the small and medium enterprise in China and is compiled by a private sector uh, private sector compiled survey that means by Tai Sing. so Tai Sing, my friend PMI actually came in slightly uh, below the previous month of 51 at 50.6 is still with the expansionary mode but below consensus of 51.2 so if you look at the trend of the Tai Sing manufacturing PMI over here okay it actually deep down uh, below the previous month all right over here marginally but what's important uh, what's uh, starkly uh, different is the services pmi so the services pmi yes still in expansionary mode but it came in below a forecast of 52.6 and also below 51.8 by came in at below 51.8 in the month of august uh, came in at 50.2 in september and this growth uh, expansionary mode in the Tai manufacturing pmi is the weakest so far 
in since the start of this year okay it's the weakest growth so far in terms of uh, services activities so what we could see over here right there is actually a mix uh, we call it a reading on the pmi data yes on the government compound one is much more rosy but on the private sector compound one which is done by chising is uh, pretty much mixed back uh, over here especially on the services pmi where growth uh, it's still growing because it's over 50, but growth rate has started to decelerate and it's the lowest growth uh, expansion mode since the start of this year. So overall, it's still a rather uh, mixed bag of a picture uh, for this uh, key economic data that is out from China over the weekend. All right. So later we take a look at the uh, dollar CNH. Uh, 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 how does it uh, faring right now? But bear in mind, do not forget over here is that today the Hong Kong stock market is closed as well. So no training for our Hong Kong 33 index for today. And as well as the whole of this week, the China financial market, the stock market will also be closed as well. That means for today, Monday, all the way up to Friday for their golden week holiday. So uh, I reckon that over here is that uh, even though the Hong Kong 33 index or the Hang Seng benchmark stock indices will be open on Tuesday onwards, means from tomorrow onwards, but liquidity will tend to be thinner due to the fact of the closure of the mainland China financial market for the golden week for the entire of this week. Okay, now. Uh, with that, what other key economic data to look out for for today? Okay, let me go up. Let me share this week. Okay, so what are the key economic data to look out for for today? Uh, for today will be uh, pretty much uh, quiet. <coughs> so uh, data that has really been released in Japan. So over here in Japan, right, a uh, uh, business sentiment, uh, Tankan last manufacturing business sentiment is pretty much rosy, uh, positive, 0.9 above the previous month of plus 0.5 and above consensus of plus 6. And also, if you look at the Tankan large, not large non manufacturing business sentiment, that means we talk about non manufacturers, large non manufacturers sentiment as well be positive as well, plus 27 above the previous month of plus 23 and above the consensus of plus 24. All right. So, overall, uh, what you see over here is, yep. Recently, we have the inflation gauge data. So inflation gauge data, uh, TD, uh, we call it the, the, the inflation gauge data in Australia for the month of September, month on month, uh, is came down uh, almost unchanged at 0% of the previous month of 0.2%. That means it came to us that inflationary pressure on a month on month basis, this is a gauge of sentiment, uh, inflation set, uh, expectation or sentiment on a month on month basis has starts to inch lower based on this TDMI uh, inflation gauge. All right. So if you look at this over here, how does it compile? Uh? Okay, zero. Uh? So it starts to actually, so it's actually the weakest uh, so far in the last uh, 12 months or so. Okay. okay no, sorry, pardon me. Uh, this one over here, let me go back uh where I'm talking at yeah it's zero zero percent okay so it buys you just it came out of 9 30 a.m Singapore time so it's actually the weakest growth in terms of inflationary expectation in the last uh, 12 months or so or so okay so indicating to us that uh, it seems to us that inflationary uh, we call it expectation in terms of this gauge inflationary gauge, the Australian Melbourne Institute inflation gauge has starts to ease off. That means what it means that uh, RBA shouldn't be in hurry to actually to start to actually kickstart interest rate hike again. Okay, still remember they actually pause for the uh, two uh, consec uh, for uh, they actually hold consecutive rates, the cash rates for the four consecutive months uh, at four point four consecutive months at 4.1 percent so in the upcoming one in tomorrow that is very unlikely that they will actually start to hike rates again so likely will be a fifth month or the fifth consecutive fifth consecutive meeting of unchanged at 4.1 percent for the rba monetary policy meeting tomorrow okay now given the fact that over here uh, what we could see other than that uh yeah, not much key data, but so this data is more of a finalized PMI data, which is more or less the same as the preliminary one. So uh, what you have over here in US later will be the ISM manufacturing, which is pretty key. So market is still expecting a weak number at 47.1, that means below 50, which is 
contractory mode and slightly below the previous month of 47.6 in August. So that's for the month of September, the ISM manufacturing PMI for US at 10 p.m. Singapore time later. All right, then also at 11 p.m., uh, Fed chair will be speaking. So something that could be uh, important that could actually move, move the market as well if you start to mention anything about his view on the interest rate uh, his in the, the interest rate policy in US and as well as what is his opinion on the current inflationary trend in US after the mixed reading that was released, the, PC, the PCE mixed reading that was released on Friday. Okay, so these are the key economic data and events to look out for for today. And also tomorrow uh, will be very quickly just now share with the RBA at 11.30 a.m. So with uh, the just now I share with you the inflation gauge or expectation that is start to inch downward. So very unlikely RBA will actually start to increase interest rate. Uh, more, more or less, they will start to stamp at 4.1%. So that will be the fifth consecutive meeting of keeping rates unchanged at 4.1%. If it turns out we in expectation tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. All right, so these are the key things and events or ev key economic data and events to look out for. So now let's kick, kick start on the key uh, short-term technical outlook. Okay, so before I start on the short-term technical outlook, I want to share with you uh, a picture of the US stock market first. So over here, the US stock market was rather uh, mixed over here, or you could see. So the strongest was actually the mega cap stocks over here or the technology sector. Uh, Microsoft uh, managed to gain 0.7%, Apple 0.3%, Nvidia positive 0.95%, Amazon 91%, and Tesla up positive 1.56%. So that actually uh, allowing the Nasdaq 100 to actually shape that corrective rebound. Uh, still recall that on last Friday, we have the short term technical outlook of a short term bullish bias for that counter trend uh, rebound, which actually took shape on the Nasdaq 100. Okay. And the rest of the market uh, is actually rather uh, mixed or bearish. So overall, right, that actually gives us a trend on last Friday. The SPX is actually down negative 0.27%. The Nasdaq is the top performer. At, towards the end, it managed to close negative 0.08%. The Dow Jones was the weakest at negative 0.47%, and followed by the Russell at negative 0.51%. So overall, right, the, this was, you know, last Friday is also the end of the month. So for the September month, uh, it actually, the S&P 500 has a negative monthly return of negative 4.9%. Okay, so negative 4.9%. So this is the uh, weakest monthly return since September last year. Okay, since September 2022 last year. Okay, then in terms of the Dow Jones, okay, it has managed to close below the 200-day moving average. Also, negative 0.35 percent so that for the month of september so it's, it's the week, weakest return monthly return since september last year but technical configuration is much weak than the s p 500 why because the s p 500 still managed to hold above the 200 day moving average but the dow jones has already broken below the 200 day moving average all right then uh let's take a look at the nasdaq 100 okay nasdaq 100 monthly also has a weakest return at negative 5.07%, a weakest monthly return since December last year. All right, but still holding above the 200-day moving average. The Russell 2000, okay, so this is the weakest uh, among all the pair. Why? Because it didn't shape higher high. It managed to congest within a symmetrical triangle, triangle configuration on a monthly chart, on a monthly basis. So monthly return negative 6% or negative 6.03% to be precise, weakest monthly return since September last year. And it closed below the 50 day moving average and as well as the 200 day moving average. So pretty much weak technical configuration uh, on the Russell 2000. And why Russell 2000 is important? Because the majority of the component stock inside Russell 2000 derive, their, ma, ma, derive most of their revenue inflow from the US economy rather than the international economy comp, uh, that was actually seen international economy where, major, where the mega cap stocks in the S&P 500 derive from internationally. All right, so 
if the Russell 2000 coil to inch downwards in the next three months or so, it actually signified to us that US economy is rather on a weak footing. That means there could be a risk of a recession rather than a soft landing, given the fact that majority of the component stock in the Russell 2000 derive their revenue inflow from the US economy rather internationally. All right, so now with that, uh, very quickly, let's take a look at the technical configuration, the short-term technical configuration of the major, U the major US stock indices first. All right, so let us start with the NASDAQ 100. All right, so this is short-term, okay, short-term uh, and hourly chart. So as you all know that price action on the short-term don't actually follow the, the, the main trend, okay, they actually oscillate or they mean revert sometimes. So if you look at the, NASDAQ 100. So last Friday, we have a short term bullish bias for a potential short term counter trend rebound. Yes, the rebound actually took shape, hit the first resistance at 14,860, came down, and right now during the Asia session, it retests this level again at 14,870 due to the fact of that positive news flow of that uh, US uh, shutdown is being averted. Okay, so with that, right, the technical configuration going to remain positive on the short term. Momentum still holding above the 50 MA. There's no signs of a bearish divergence at all. Okay, continue to shape higher low. So all in all, right, uh, what we could do over what we would do over here for today is we will actually, given the fact that short term momentum remains positive, that means the hourly RSI remains remains positive. Potentially this short-term counter trend rebound could continue or could extend potentially as long as 14,645 key short-term pivotal resistance holds. The next resistance coming in at 14,980, a break above 15,140, which is close to the 20-day moving average. However, if we start to see a breakdown with an hourly close below 14,645, then this short-term counter trend rebound will be invalidated to see a further slight or impulsive down move to retest the support level of 28th of September low at 14,000 slash 445 slash 14,370 on the NASDAQ 100. Now, let's go on to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, for, uh, which is the US Wall Street 30. Uh, given the fact that last Friday it managed to bounce up pretty strongly at the lower boundary, which is 33,360. Still recall that last Friday, we have a neutral bias. So overall, the RSI also remains kind of positive right now, managed to actually uh, inch up above the 50 level. So we will be flipping to a short-term bullish condition to and, uh, for a short-term counter-trend rebound scenario. As long as 33,360, key short-term pivotal short, uh, pardon me, 33,360 short-term pivotal support holds. All right. First resistance to look at will be 33,940. Above it exposes the next resistance at 34,150, which is coming close to the 20-day moving average. However, if we start to see an hourly close and break down below 33,360, then this short-term counter-trend rebound scenario will be invalidated to see a further push down towards the next support level at 33,160, followed by 32,990. Now, German 30. So over here, the German 30, last Friday, we were actually turning neutral, but price action going to inch much higher, and the RSI going to shape higher low higher low, holding above a, a prior support and now uh, and managed to help above the 50, 50 level. So indicate to us that the short term momentum continue to be positive. So with the short term momentum continue to be positive as indicated by RSI, we will be flipping to a short term bullish bias for today uh, for an extension of this potential short term counter trend rebound holding above 15,290 key short term pivotal support level with the next resistance coming with the next with the resistance to watch coming in at 15600 on the shorter term which is the 200 day moving average all right above it potentially sees the next resistance coming in at 15810 which is the descending the medium term descending channel resistance from the high of 31st of July and as well as the 50 coinciding with the 50 day moving average as well 
Okay. However, a breakdown below 15,290, that means the hourly close below it, uh, will evaluate this short-term counter trend rebound to see a retest of that 15,130 key short-term. Uh, the next support level, uh, the, 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 the white call that the, the next near-term support level, which is the swing low of last Thursday and last Friday at 15,130 level. Okay, so very quickly, right, uh, the Nikkei 225. So for the Nikkei 225, uh, there's also a potential counter trend rebound that is actually taking shape as well over here. So uh, what we could see over here is that the RSI managed to shape a bullish divergence on last Friday. Price action managed to break above this previous former swing high area on last Friday and Thursday. So all in all, right, uh, what we could see over here is that I'll be using 32,070 as my key short-term pivotal support level on the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225, looking for a test on the resistance level at 32,460, which is so the 50-day moving average, and as well as the this, uh, we call it minor descending channel resistance also in place at 15, 15th of September high, which so confl confluences close closely at the 50-day 50 50-day 50 moving average, also acting as a resistance at the same level at 32,460. A break above this 32,460 potentially extend this counter trend rebound to test the next resistance level, which is the 25th of September swing high and 26th of September minus swing high, confluencing at the 20-day moving average at 32,007. 30 level. However, if we start to see an hourly breakdown below 32,070, then this counter trend rebound scenario, short term counter trend rebound scenario will be evaluated to see the continuation of the impulsive down move towards the next support level at 31,625, which is the 25th of August 2022, 2023 swing low area. All right, so that's for the indices. Now let's uh, quickly go to the uh, FX market. So over the FX market for the sterling dollar, last Friday on the sterling dollar, we are we have this short-term bullish bias for that short-term counter trend rebound. So that short-term counter trend rebound took shape and hit the resistance level at 122.70. So uh, no change, we'll be still using 121.10 as my key short-term pivotal support level for today. Uh, a breakup above 122.70 potentially should see the continuation of this counter short-term counter trend rebound to test the next resistance level at 123.70 level. Okay, so that will be the 20-day moving average. Also, I think a confluencing uh, at this resistance, the graphical resistance at 123.70. But however, if we start to see a breakdown below 121.10, then this short-term counter trend rebound scenario, the extension of this short-term counter trend rebound scenario will be invalidated to see a further push down to uh, test the next support level at 120.50. All right, so that's for the uh, sterling dollar. So for the euro dollar, uh, the counter trend rebound continues to actually take shape. Uh, last Friday, it almost uh, hit the uh, resistance level that we mentioned at 106.30. So we will be still using the 104.80 level as my key short-term pivotal support for today to maintain that short-term counter trend rebound scenario towards 160.30. Above it potentially exposes 106.70, which is so the 20-day moving average, I think as a resistance as well. However, a breakdown below 104.80 will actually invalidate this short-term counter trend rebound scenario that means invalidate the short-term bullish uh, condition to see the start of another impulsive down move to test the next support level at 1.0420 level on the euro dollar. All right, so now very quickly uh, on the dollar yen. So you could see over here that the dollar yen continue is very strong, uh, stubbornly uptrend despite the fact that we start to see a, a, a surge in the 10-year JGB yield. And also, uh, there's also continuous sign of MOF official uh, doing verbal intervention to actually uh, saying that they're actually watching the dollar, the FX market. Okay, so the next resistance, right, is the coming very close to the major resistance really at 150.30. Follow up above it will be 151.95, which is the high of 21st of October that actually ignited the previous, uh, we call it uh, fast and furious BOJ intervention, where MOF instructed the Bank of Japan to sell dollar by the Japanese yen. So uh, we still got to respect the trend. The trend is still going to actually inch higher. Uh, RSI, yeah, nothing much on the RSI going to actually hover uh, below, slightly below the overbought zone. There's no clear bullish divergence, bearish divergence at this point in time.
All right, no, no clear bearish divergence. Uh. So we still got to respect the trend in the short term, at least to 150.30. So with that in mind, right, we'll be flipping to a short term bullish bias condition for today on the dollar yen, given the fact that uh, the trend still remains positive on the daily chart over here. So over at the hourly RSI, hourly RSI also remains positive, uh, holding, according to inch up higher above the 50 level, hasn't hit the overbought region yet. So uh, I'm using 148.16 as my key short-term pivotal support for today. Uh, looking for the next resistance to come in for the dollar yen at 150 figures slash 150.30. Uh, only a break below 148.16, then we could actually invalidate this uh, short-term bullish bias condition for today to see dollar yen to slide down to retest the former uh, minor resistance turns now turns into a pullback support at 148.40 level, which is coming very close to the 20 day moving average as well. So flipping to a bullish bias condi bullish bias condition short term for the dollar yen, given the fact that the trend on the daily chart remains positive and also the hourly RSI also indicating that short term momentum still remains positive as well, as long as 148.16 short-term pivotal support holds for today on the dollar yen. Okay, so that's pretty much a uh, sum up for the FX market over here. So now we have reached the uh, 33 hour mark as well. 33 minute mark, pardon me, 33 minute mark as well. So with that, uh, that could actually uh, uh, pretty much, uh, 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 we call it a uh, highlight the key uh, stuff for today's uh, daily dose of market insight. So with that, uh, I wish you all a great day ahead and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.